All right, so this is a video of me trying out Ubuntu Touch on the Pinephone Braveheart Edition. This is a fresh SD card, so we'll go through the initial setup and then just kind of try out all the pre-installed apps, see what works, see what doesn't work. You'll notice, you know, the boot logo, it's a bit uh, artifacty right now, but I'm sure that's probably a quick fix. It doesn't really affect anything. Okay, so uh, here we go, it wants us to select our language, I will select English, uh, it's upset that there's no SIM card in there, which is fine, um, we're not going to connect to a Wi-Fi network just yet, um, you can select your time zone, before, when I tried this, this didn't actually really work correctly. Let's see if it can find... Actually, this one. Next, uh, type in your name. And then that's it. That's the whole setup. Uh, there might be more. Right now it doesn't actually uh, fully install it onto the um, the onboard storage. It's just being loaded off of a SD card. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get in here. So, let's see. You should be able to swipe down. Swipe here. Oh, there we go. Anyway, well, so this is how you use Ubuntu Touch. You, you start off here and you swipe over from the left to get these icons, kind of similar to how Unity looked on the desktop. And you can tap the little Ubuntu icon to get all of your apps and search those. Um, this is like the little kind of notification quick setting area. Looks like we don't have... I don't know what happened to the battery. It was fully charged last time I tried this, but whatever. Uh, so we can kind of go through and try some of the apps. You have the calculator. Oh, it's it's making us go through a tutorial. I don't really want that. Okay, anyway. So here's the calculator app. It's a calculator, you know, you can do some basic calculations, square roots, um, let's see what's down here. Some more advanced stuff here. You can do like exponentials, modulo, uh, trigonometry. So, you know, it's, it's basically just kind of your standard basic calendar. Um, swipe over from the right to see all your open tasks, and then you can swipe them up to close them. Uh, let's take a look at the calendar app. Alright, so we see basically an agenda view for the day. You can switch it to weekly view, or month or year. Uh, check that out. It has a little battery low notification. That's um that's actually quite nice. Nice little quality of life improvement. If we tap that, it'll take us to the system settings. Mm 
interesting little thing shows you your battery usage over time. Uh, we'll go back to the calendar. Well, that was kind of, looks like if you swipe to the right, just kind of real quick, uh, it'll like take you between apps. Anyway, uh, we'll close settings. And um, see if we can change any calendar settings. You can um, use a, a Chinese calendar, change your business hours, which will, like, uh, it'll usually change the color of business hours, um, change how early you want to be reminded for things, and change your default calendar. So like um, here, here, let me go back to the daily view. The the business hours are, are um, gray here, and before and after is white. So that's what that would change. You can close that. The camera, uh, I'll open it, it doesn't work. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what it is. Uh, later on, I think you can use it via, like, the command line, but it doesn't work via the camera app yet, but that shouldn't be too difficult of a fix. Uh, we can use the clock. Oh, which looks like it crashed on us. Huh, okay, well, um... As you can imagine, that's probably just a basic clock app. You have your contacts. Great. Uh, you could import them from Google, it looks like. I would assume that they would also have options for, like, Nextcloud or, you know, any, like, CalDAV kind of setup. Uh, you have Google account, default address book, import for SIM, from SIM. Let's see if we can create a contact. Yep. Come on. There we go. So uh, let's do Joe. Smith. And um, what do we got from here? We can choose from, we could take a picture from the, ca the camera, if that worked. You can get something from the internet via the built-in web browser. You can use the file manager or the gallery. I don't have any pictures on here, so we'll just leave it. And then uh, if we hit that, there's Joe Smith. Great. Right. We don't have any information on him, but you get the idea. Uh, external drives. I don't think I have anything in here because I don't have any external drives connected, but we can see. Um, looks like you can format things from here, which I won't do, but uh, that's pretty cool. The file manager is pretty standard. It'll show you your home folder, I would assume. Yep. You can look at your documents or pictures. Oh, screenshots. No, we don't have any screenshots. Um, templates. Anything in there? Nope. Pretty, pretty standard stuff. Um, one thing I am curious about, maybe I'll try this out later, is whether if you put stuff in the desktop view, whether that would like uh, show up, you know, on the desktop. I don't know how to get back to it um, on like this area. I don't know if it would show up here if you put like shortcuts and stuff in the desktop folder. That would be nice little feature to have though. All right, so. Uh, gallery, I don't have any photos on here, but I assume it'll just be, uh, oh, events, what is that? Albums, events, photos. 
I don't know what events is. Maybe it'll cluster things by date or something. That would be interesting. But uh, I don't have any photos on here, so it's kind of a boring app to look at right now. Media player. If you had videos or music, I assume you'd open it up in here. Um, yeah, it asks you where to choose from, the gallery, the file manager, or the camera, which is kind of weird, actually, why you want to open the camera and record a video and then open that back up in the media player. But I guess uh, it's something you could do. Uh, messaging is not going to work because we don't have a SIM card in here. And I don't have any like Jabber server set up, but you could uh, create a new message by swiping up. You could uh, type Joe, maybe. I don't know. No SIM card. Well, presumably, you could, if you had like a contact that had a phone number, you could just type their name in there and write them a message. It's not going to send. Anyway, um, yeah, that's another way to create a new message. What do we got as far as settings? Uh, you can enable or disable MMS. Uh, simplified conversation view. I don't know what that is. You can change the theme and change how you sort your threads. Pretty simple messaging app. There we go. All right, what else we got? Uh, the web browser, which I'll open up. We don't have any internet here, so I can't uh, browse the web. It does connect to internet, but um, my university's Wi-Fi network is kind of, you know, it's complicated. Like, you have to install, it's, it's like a fancy corporate, you know, it's not your simple WPA type setup. But anyway, um, actually, the, the web browser is pretty nice. You can open new windows. It has like an incognito mode, bookmarks, history, downloads. We can look through the settings real quick. You can uh, change your search engine. It comes with a bunch of them out of the box. DuckDuckGo is default. Change your home page. Set it to whether you want to restore all your pages when you first start up or, or not. Uh, you can change whether I assume the default mode is like desktop, so it'll request the desktop version of the site. Uh, you can change the default, default zoom, privacy and permission. Uh, you can default to privacy mode or to, to like incognito mode. Only allow browsing to whitelist. So you can have like a website whitelist. You can uh, blacklist and whitelist domains. I don't know if you could use that maybe to add block ads or something. Uh, domain specific settings. I, I don't know what that does, but um, probably something interesting. Camera and microphone. Change whether it has access to the camera and microphone. And then you can uh, clear the cache and clear the cookies. Alright, well, that is that. That's the web browser. Music is, I guess, the music player. Again, I don't have any music on here to show you, but if you did, I assume it would go and get album art and stuff for it. Enjoy your favorite music with Ubuntu's music app. Alright, we'll take the little tour here. Import your music. Simply drag files to the music folder. So if it was in the uh, music folder of your home directory, you could use that. Download new music. Directly import music bot online while browsing. I don't know what that is about, um, but maybe it connects to uh, like Amazon or something. No music found. Yeah, that's not surprising. All right, so probably just a pretty basic music app. Uh, notes. Doesn't seem to do anything. All right. The 
open store is kind of like the app store. I'm not going to use it because this is not connected to the internet, so it won't do anything. The phone app is just a phone dialer. Uh, it can like access your contacts and you know, you can type a number. And if I had a SIM card in here, I could call it. Let's see what's down here. Yeah, you can see your recent missed calls. I'll skip over the system settings for now. We'll go to look at terminal. So this is just a terminal. You can bring up the keyboard with this button. List the current directory. Run, you know, whatever Linux terminal application you want. It gives you shortcuts for control, you know, various key combinations. Anyway, it's pretty neat. Uh, I probably wouldn't use that too much, but at least if things go well. Um, the UB Ports app is pretty much just an app that... I don't really know what this app does, to be honest. It just, I guess it's like a thank you app to UB Ports or something. And then last is the weather app, which probably won't work because we don't have internet access. And it appears to have just crashed anyway, so um, maybe if you had internet it would work. I do think I've gotten that weather app to work before in the past. So the system settings, uh, I can't go through everything in here because there's too much. Maybe I'll make a separate video going through all the system settings. But, you know, it's pretty standard stuff. You can set up your online accounts, like your Google account and your Nextcloud and a CalDAV server and stuff. Um, Libertine is a way to, inst like, um, use, they call them classic, classic Ubuntu applications. Uh, which is neat. Not sure how much that would be really useful since they probably wouldn't be optimized for the form factor, but something to look at. Uh, mouse and touchpad. You could use this if you like hooked this phone up to a, a full monitor to use the convergent mode for Ubuntu Touch. Uh, you can reset your phone, so like erase everything and factory re reset it, which is neat. Mm. One thing I will show you, this is a bug that I found earlier, is it doesn't seem like you can set the time, like it's stuck permanently at January, you know, 1970, around the Unix epoch. Uh, like, even if you, you try to change it to, like, a more modern day, like 2012 or something, uh, it won't change. It does nothing. So... Uh, that makes web browsing kind of difficult because, like, all the SSL certificates are not going to be valid because it thinks that it's 1970. So, it's that, that shouldn't be too difficult to get fixed. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I want to go over. I, I think I went through each of these apps. You can... How do you get that? You swipe down from the top. And you have your rotation lock, oops, sorry, you have your notifications, rotation lock, keyboard, files, I don't know what that does, uh, your location mode settings, Bluetooth, network settings, uh, it is seeing the Wi-Fi networks, and I know it can connect to them, I've done that in the past. Uh, you can change your volume, stop, start, and stop the me media. See your current battery, which is at 6%, so I'm going to hurry up this video. You can see your calendar. And you can, uh, you know, see about this device. It's running Ubuntu. Wi-Fi, MAC address. Storage, it says we have 18.4 exabytes free, which, needless to say, is not true. 
So, um, we have like a hundred, I think this is like a 128 gigabyte SSD, or not SSD, SD card. But anyway, um, I'm just going to shut down the system. It does work. And there you go, it's shut down. So that is Ubuntu Touch on the Pine Phone. Uh, I may make videos do it for some of the other ones like KDE, Plasma Mobile, or or uh, Sailfish OS, which both work on this as well. So uh, you know, like if you like the video. Um, otherwise, goodbye.